When it comes to eating on keto, I like anything that is quick, easy, and budget friendly. These cream cheese pork chops check all of those boxes. They are the perfect combination of cheesy, spicy, and juicy. I have been making these well over four years now. And if you ask my husband, he would have them at least once a week. To begin in our bowl, I have four boneless pork chops. They are pretty small. It is just myself eating this. So I have enough for leftovers tomorrow. For our liquid, we are going to be using this Salsa Verde. This is the brand that I get. I can find this at Walmart and at Kroger. It's pretty inexpensive. I like to buy it in the jug because I make these pork chops very frequently. So I like to have it on hand. So we are going to be pouring in a half cup of the salsa verde. A little bit too much. Okay, half cup of salsa verde. I'm gonna go ahead and season them first and then add in my verde. I know it sounds very, um, why season the pork chops if you're gonna pour a liquid on it and I totally understand that, but the flavors kind of marinate together and it makes it perfect. So let's go ahead and set our pork chops to the side. The taco seasoning that I am making, we are not gonna be using this whole thing. So I'm gonna put it into an airtight container. That way I can store it later. So for our seasonings, we will need one tablespoon of chili powder, one tablespoon of ground cumin, two teaspoons of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of cayenne, one teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of oregano, one teaspoon of salt, and one fourth teaspoon of cinnamon. Give this a good stir. We wanna make sure that nothing is stuck to the bottom, that way when we get our tablespoon out for our pork chops that you get enough of all of the flavors. So I will be using one tablespoon of our taco seasoning mix and pour in our salsa verde. Now go in with your hands. Yes, if you have gloves, wear gloves. I actually bought some and I lost them. So I had to buy a new pack. I have no idea where they went. I just grabbed like a random little package from Walmart, but that is fine. Of course, I will wash my dirty hands after this. Do not worry about that. All right, we are gonna place this into our fridge for about 10, 15 minutes or so. That way we can get all the other ingredients prepared. For the rest of our ingredients, it is very just however much you wanna use of these ingredients. So I have one pack of thin sliced hickory bacon. We'll probably be using about four strips of this. Monterey Jack cheese. I usually use cheddar cheese, but I left it at work. For the jalapenos, you can use the pre-cut. These are the slices that I'll be cutting at myself, or you can just use a whole jalapeno, whatever you have on hand. Of course, these will be a lot softer. These will be a lot crunchier, completely up to you. And then I have one block of cream cheese that I've been letting sit out, that way it can soften up. We will be placing this in the microwave, but I like to have it pre-softened. We are gonna be dicing up our jalapenos. You can leave them whole. I've actually never done that. I just kind of dice them up into like little fourths or so. Um, that way that they are not too big of a bite. And of course I have to use the biggest knife possible because my smaller knives are dirty and um, I don't feel like washing them right now. So just really, really rough chop these. Of course, wear a glove if you want to. I'm just, I'm gonna make sure I don't touch my eyes, you know attempt to make sure I don't touch my eyes. I have actually never had that issue before, so knock on countertop, that, that doesn't happen. Now, there probably will be, depending on how much of the cream cheese mixture that you wanna put on top, some of the cream cheese will be left over. Some examples that I like to do is add these to my eggs in the morning. You could put it in like a tortilla with some scrambled eggs. This mixture is delicious. You could add it to a grilled chicken breast, whatever tickles your fancy. It is that good. For my bacon, I am going to be cutting this down the center. I'm not, of course, using all of this bacon, but I am going to go ahead and pre-prep some for tomorrow because I've been cooking my bacon at work um, and I kind of feel bad <laughs> for my great aunt that I work with because our kitchen is like in her kitchen and or is in her office and I feel like I keep smelling up her office with my bacon and eggs in the morning. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and pre-cook this with our other half of the bacon. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that into a gallon size Ziploc bag, put this in the fridge, and I will eat this in the upcoming days because we have been going through a lot of bacon lately. I have cooked these pork chops in my cast iron skillet, in the oven, and in my Ninja Foodi, which is what we are gonna be using today. Don't worry, if you don't have one, I will list how you can cook these in the other two options down below. So I am actually gonna go ahead and cook up my bacon first. So I have the little tray in here, which we will be using later. We are gonna be using the basket to start off with. So into my Ninja, I am just going to be placing as many slices of bacon in there as I can. And of course, you could definitely do this on the skillet if you're cooking it on the skillet or if you just wanna do it like that, but I don't feel like dirtying up any more dishes than I would have to. So for the Ninja, we are going to air crisp these at 400 for, let's go five minutes. Our bacon is all finished up. And if you're wondering as far as the grease, I did go ahead and strain it out. That way I don't have any like little nasty bits in there. I'll just put this in the refrigerator once it cools down. So now for our pork chops, we are gonna be putting in this little trivet down here at the bottom. Be careful because this is very hot. I have burned myself numerous times making this recipe. Our pork chops have been in the fridge this whole time, so I am just going to take them and kind of bounce them a little bit just to get some of that excess off of there, and then just placing all of them onto that trivet. Since these are pretty small pork chops, I usually get the smaller ones when I make this recipe, but I have definitely done the bigger ones before, but I've never done the bigger ones in the air fryer. I usually just do these smaller ones because they don't take much time at all to cook. So with the leftover of that little bit there, I'm just gonna kind of pour that over these. That way we're not really wasting anything. You don't have to do this. I'm just gonna spread that around, make a mess in the process. So I'm not sure why, but I've never thought to do this, but I usually pour in chicken broth whenever I make my chicken. So I am gonna be pouring in one cup of water that way that it can keep some of that moisture in there and maybe it'll keep it from drying out a little bit, but we're experimenting, we'll find out. Let's put our lid, we are gonna, oop, stop it. Timer was still on from the other thing. All right, let me turn it off. Turn it back on. We are gonna air crisp at 360 for seven minutes on each side. Yeah. So after our seven minutes, they are fully cooked. I am going to leave these in here while we get our cream cheese mixture put together. To a microwave safe bowl, we are just going to add in our cream cheese and heat this up for 15 seconds, stir and heat it for another 15. Just kidding, it was soft enough at just one 15 second increment. So let's set that to the side. And for our bacon, have about six pieces or so. They're a little, little bit flippy, flippy, flippy? What's the word? Flimsy. They're a little flimsy now, but that is fine because they are gonna go right back into that air fryer on top of the pork chops and crisp up. So I'm just going to cut them into a little bit smaller pieces. Add this into our cream cheese, along with those diced jalapenos and some Monterey Jack cheese. I'm probably using half a cup or so. This is kind of blocky because I shredded this up myself. Now you can totally add some of the taco seasoning to this if you want even more of a spice, but I'm going to leave it how it is. And then we're gonna add in our final ingredient, which is just a smidge of our salsa verde. Back over our Ninja Foodi, we are gonna open it up and attempt to work backwards here with our basket that we used Earlier, we are gonna be placing those pork chops into our basket. Now again, this is very hot, so use 
something other than just your bare hand to take it out. And then we are gonna add our basket back in and top our pork chops with our cream cheese mixture. I like to get a big dollop in there because these will also help these kind of soften up if you did overcook them a little bit. That one is so tiny. I said this was gonna be lunch and dinner, but this may be just dinner. Because this is a, this is like a meal on its own. Honestly, we, we don't really do sides anymore, but whenever we did, this was a side. Like this was our whole meal, our whole side. It is so, so filling. And we are going to turn this back on to broil for three minutes. Here is my tip to you. Make sure you're the first person to get your pork chops so that you can divvy it out and get all the little melted cheese crumbs off the bottom. Don't tell my husband I told you this secret because he doesn't know I do this every time. I just finished my pork chops off with a little bit more of that bacon. We have one cup's worth of the cream cheese mixture. Put this on your eggs in the morning and it'll be life changing. It is so freaking delicious. If you do need some easy budget friendly recipes, this chicken marinade one is perfect for the summertime and I will catch you guys there.